thanks so much for stopping in today. I've got a little bit of maintenance work I need to do right here. I thought I'm going to do that. I'm going to share this with you, but I also want to have a conversation about the uh, electrical design. It's something that we've never actually done before. And I know when we were, does, we were working on our design for our van, I would love to have had someone just share their ideas with me as, as, as that they had while they were building there. So I'm going to do that today. I have to replace this. I have to replace this cigarette plug into my little service panel here in the basement. I took it out because the uh, the hydro went off here in the mountains this about a while ago. Anyway, we had a bad storm and the hydro was off. And it was off for, well, at the end of the first day, I started to get a little bit concerned because we didn't know, we're pretty rural out here, pretty remote. And I didn't know how long it was gonna to take to get back on again. And I didn't want to have the, uh, I was concerned about our freezer and stuff, you know. And so it struck me, that I have my system shut down for the winter because we're not going to be using our van in the winter time. I shut it down, and that means I took our our um, lithium batteries out. And with the Renergy 100 amp hour smart lithium batteries, you charge them completely, and then there's a little button you can push, and it goes into what they call shelf mode, and it just sits there. And in theory, next spring, when I or a couple of months later, when I take it out in the springtime and, and reinstall it and hit that button again, it still should be pretty much charged. So we're sitting in our house with no hydro, and I'm thinking, you know, I've got 200 amp hours of energy stored in that battery, those batteries, and I have a 90 liter Dometic uh, refrigerator slash freezer uh, chest that I can program and maybe I could you know hook that up so I thought well I, I want to do that in order to do that I need a cigarette lighter plug to plug the cooler into and I came down and I pulled the one out of here and it's the emergency has been averted and uh, now I can put it back together again so I'm going to do that sorry about the noise here but while I'm doing that, I wanted to talk to you about the design because, like most people, uh, we worked. I worked on the van all last winter. But when it came time that the sun was out, we wanted to start using it. It wasn't completely finished, so we hit it out without without any of the wiring done initially. And uh, because of COVID, uh, I couldn't get the parts, so we went out the first time. And there was a video here about that for me installing the fans directly to the battery of the van at the front because I didn't have batteries back here and um, trying to get something jury rigged so at least we could get a little bit of cooling. And then we came back and we the, the uh, electrical parts were all in. And the solar was there. And so I was able to get that much put together. And that was great. And then um, I was debating about, I designed for, I designed for having an inverter right here, a 2000, watt uh, pure sine wave inverter right here and that's what i designed for we have a hot water tank and we have we wanted to have a cooktop and, and things and um well i didn't get that far i didn't get that far it turned in, and it was time for our road trip back to ontario which is a we're going to be on the road for seven weeks and uh and i thought well that's not going to be too that's not going to be too handy that could be a bit of a problem so what what am i going to do and so what i did was i got a power bar and I ran all my plugs to the power bar that would, would have ran to the inverter. And I ran my cord for shore power here, down and out the back. I'll show you that. I'll show you that maybe at the end. I'll show you just how I figured that out for the, the ProMaster van. I was really happy with it. And I thought, well, when we get into when we get into campgrounds, I'll just plug into shore power and I'll have my, my power here. Now, I didn't get the plumbing done either. So I guess a big question about whether or not you need an inverter is going to be, what are you going to use this type of power for? We have 12 volts going to service our lights and USB chargers and that kind of thing. What do we need this kind of power for? And not everyone's going to be the same, but in our particular case, we need that power to run our hot water tank, if we had it in, and a uh, induction cooktop for cooking inside the van. And I suppose for charging a computer or something if we needed to. But those are the only three things that we have that, are, that need to plug into a regular household current. So I hit the road thinking, well, and, and, and uh, the other thing that we did was we brought along a small 1500 watt space heater in case it got cold, thinking if we're plugged into shore power, I can plug that in as well. And we did, we did do that too. We did do that too. So we hit the road. And as we're traveling along, 
we don't boondock much at all. If we do boondock, at least for this trip, we weren't out boondocking for a week at the same place. It was like we were driving along and there was we just found a place to camp for the night, spent the night and then got up in the morning and hit it out again. We weren't there for any length of time. So our experience has been, excuse me, I'm going to turn around. Our experience has been that, that the, uh, here we are right here. Look at that. Our experience has been that we don't cook inside the van. It's just not something that we do. We, if we're, we pull in and we cook on a, a camp stove or a campfire or something, we don't, we're not just going to pull up and park and get them and cook inside the van. That's something that we have, we have never done that. We've, uh, prepared breakfast, I guess, and we've made a cup of tea or something before, but we've never actually cooked inside the van. So that wasn't a use. We didn't have the hot water tank, and so we didn't need that this time. We would in the future, certainly. And um, when you're installing these, there's a plug, and if you if you hold it in just the right light and you got your glasses on, it tells you which terminal is which. There's a plus and a minus. You probably won't be able to see, oh, you won't be able to see that. But there's a plus and a minus. The plus is red, the minus is black. So I've got these wires here. I just have to take the tape off that I put on as a, I don't know why, but I put tape on as a protection. And probably overkill, but I did it anyway. And the plus is red, so it goes on the plus terminal. And the black is minus. So it goes on the black terminal once I get the tape off of it. Black is minus. Good. I did that wrong. I gotta put it through here first. Let me think. How many times have you done that, eh? Here we go. It's in here. The screw on. So we we we're, we're traveling along and we're finding that we're not using the one the 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 one. 10 or 120 power, the regular household current, very much at all. We're hardly using it at all. So I'm having a personal debate about whether or not I want to get, get an inverter. I know that I will because when I put the hot water tank in, I want to be able to heat the hot water while we're driving and use the DC to DC charger to recharge the batteries as it's going. So that way the, the water heater doesn't drain the batteries completely. So I want, I will have a uh, an inverter for sure. I had thought right from the out of the out of the gate that I would have a converter, right? Which is when you take the shore power and convert the shore power current into 12 volt and recharge the batteries with it. That's the thing I don't need. That's the thing we absolutely don't need. What we found was that by plugging the cooler into the 120 when it's available, the 12 volt circuits the 12 volt draw is so minimal the sun the uh, solar panels will recharge the batteries up completely on, on even not even a really bright sunny day before lunchtime it's completely re replenished there's absolutely no reason at all to see now i, now I, I can't tell which is which Ding, dang it you're seeing this in real life in real time but i don't know i'm i normally don't talk and work at the same time i guess the um so a converter, shore power is handy when you're plugged in. It's great. I don't know though that there's a reason to have the ability to charge your batteries with shore power if you have solar. And I only have 300 watts of solar on the roof. It's not a big array, a big array. So when that's up, the negative one is closest to me. The, um, it's not a big array and but, and I have the DC to DC charger. Now the DC to DC charger is here and that's the Renergy 50 amp. And, and again, if you watch the solar, my solar video, we don't use it much. The solar panels seem to work fine. They do a lot more than you'd think they would. But the, uh, there we go. But with the solar, 300 watts of solar, and the ability to use the DC to DC on a cloudy day, I don't see any need personally for an, a converter to take shore power and use it to charge the batteries. I just don't see a need for that at all. And so I will not be doing that. Now, negative is black. It goes on the black terminal. 
positive is red. It goes on the power is in the red. That's good. Good, 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 good. There, that's up there. And put this back on. Let's put it on the little rubber covers. There we go, right there. Okay, good. And so, and so, there we go, right there. Now, this particular guy I thought would be handy. I have, uh, for the basement, I wanted to put in, I wanted to have basement uh, lights. I want to have basement lights. So there's a light switch, and I have two lights here. I'll show you a picture of it. And those are just the two leftover lights from the uh, the the six pack that I bought to do the inside of the van. I didn't I didn't need as many inside, so I had a couple left over. I threw them back here. And I'll tell you what, it's amazing to be able to reach in, throw it, throw the switch, have the whole space light up when you're at night when you're looking for something. It's just amazing. I wanted to have a cigarette lighter and a USB port. I actually, have two USB ports here, um, so that. If there was ever, if I was ever doing anything at the back, you know, like there's some little, some of the compressors that you get, and I need a cigarette lighter, and I thought just in case there was any, every, a need for any tools. The other silly thing I did was I put this three prong plug in, but there's three prong plugs right here, so I, I I went to a lot of effort to run a plug a foot and a half over from where I was, so it looks cool, but it's really it's really kind of silly when I get right down to it. Comes the tricky part of getting these screws back in the right place. That one worked, that one worked. And that one's working. Yes, sir. There we go. One, two, three. Back to, back to normal. Back good as new. And there it is, all back to normal, absolutely as good as new. That's fantastic. And while we're here, let's have a short conversation about just the electrical wiring layout and design. Because for a lot of people, this is really confusing. I know it was for me, very intimidating. But really, it's not that hard. This red wire brings the power from the battery at the front of the van. This is part of the DC to DC charging. You connect this red wire to the red terminal at the front of the van and pull it under the van, tucking it up nice and neat all the way along, come up through the floor with a grommet to protect the wire, into a breaker to protect the wire, and then it runs into the bottom of the charge controller. This red wire is the one coming off of the roof solar array. It's the power, it brings the power in through a switch for isolation and protection, and then it runs into the solar charge or the charge controller as well this is a renergy 50 watt dc to dc mpptpt controller it does both solar and these 12 volt dc to dc charging you if you it's possible to do this replace this one piece with two separate charge controllers one for the solar one for the dc to dc you can do it any way you want at the end of the day the charge controller is programmed to suit the charge profile of the type of batteries that you're using. It's not hard to do. It's all in the book. You take care of that. And then the power that it comes out with is the proper charge for your battery. Some kind of voodoo this charge controller does, makes it the right thing. It comes up, it goes through a breaker for protection, and then it runs through that breaker, and then it runs to here. Now this... These two are connected before it goes through the breaker. So in essence, these are essentially one wire. It runs up and it goes up and into the battery bank and it connects to the red terminal in the battery bank and fills the battery with the juice you're generating. When you call for power, the electricity comes back down that wire. See, that's the magical thing about electricity. It goes in both directions. It comes back down that wire, then it goes through this breaker for protection, goes over and feeds the 12 volt fuse block. The 12 volt fuse block has the wires from all the different circuits you have in the van. The light wires, the USB chargers, the, the 30 amp one here. This is the cooler one because it's heavier. Red wires connect so the power goes out. Black wires connect so the ground comes in. Black wires are the ground return wires. They come back, run through this. It's called a bus bar. And a bus bar is just a way to, to connect a whole lot of wires together. 
This is the feed that comes off the back end of the batteries, connects to the bus, bus bar. It takes both of these returns, runs them back down into the charge controller. This skinny little wire is the black wire that comes off the solar array above. It has to connect again to complete the circuit. Once it's in here, this wire comes out of the charge controller, goes down through the floor. Now this wire can go one of two places. If you choose to, you can run it all the way back up to the front of the van and connect to the black terminal on the battery at the front, or you can go through the floor and, can, and ground it directly to the frame of the truck. It has to be, you have to be careful doing that. That's what I did. It really wasn't very hard at all. I put one of these type connectors on the end of it, drilled a hole in the frame, put a, tapped it and put a bolt in there, got a really good connection, ground off the paint and the gup from the bottom so it's a good metal-to-metal -metal connection, got a good ground. The circuit is complete. It's done. A lot of pieces, but they it's, once you understand them, it's not very hard. This is the 120. This is the uh, the power bar, and this is exactly where the inverter would go if I was to have one. And that's great. Now, if I had an inverter, I would still have a power bar so that when I when I was camped in a campground and I had shore power, I wouldn't have to run the power out through the battery and drain the battery to run my 120. It's easier. It would be easier. I think it's easier just to have a power bar and just plug right into it. And this is how you do that. The power bar power comes out, connects to this little extension cord I made up because it wasn't long enough to reach all the way out. And now check this out. It goes down into this column, opening in the column. And now, this is the back of the van. And now I gotta crawl down under here. And you see there's a there's a rubber, there's a big square hole here with a rubber cover on it. There's one on each side. I have no idea what they're for, but that's why I say in the in the uh, insulation video, you can't get a vapor barrier. These things are made to breathe. That's just the nature of them. But it's a perfect spot to run that cord. Now check this out. All I did was put a... Put a plug on the end of it. And when I pull into a campground, I run an extension cord from their power to here. And once I plug it in, it's good to go. When I'm finished, I unplug it, tuck it back up over the way, travel along, you'd never know it was there. Not that stealth was really a consideration, but it saved me drilling a hole in the van. And something I really, I wanted to do as little of those as I had to. That's fantastic. Hope you found this useful. It's been a great day to work on a van and do a few little chores. Remember to subscribe, visit back, share, and leave us a comment. Cheers.